If you want to see some fun new AR publications, along with some critiques meant to push the art form forward, then stay tuned. Hello, my name is Alexis Mercedes. I am the project manager for Fractal Labs. We are an app development team that is passionate about improving the UX of XR. On this channel, we document the intersection of Web3 and augmented reality as it unfolds. In this video, we'll go over 13 experiences published to Over the Reality, an AR metaverse viewable through your mobile device. The footage you'll see are screen recordings that I've taken from my phone inside the Over app. It's free by the way, and if you wanna view these experiences yourself, just download it in the App Store and then click on the links in the description below. This is episode 15 of Reviewing Over, not counting the best of episode. So that's 195 publications that I've recorded and dissected. I might be the person who's viewed the most of these in the world, so I hope that my hot takes are useful. New Project by Perita Brava Off the bat, I love that they include a call to action. Hi, I'm the INFT from Perita Brava. I'm supposed to be here to attend to your work video calls while you play PlayStation 5 or take a nap. But considering I have Chat Incorporated as my main engine, I hope you'll stop by Noah's Ark to pay me a more constructive visit for everyone. Plus, there are a lot of new collections that have been merged in the last few weeks. Come and visit us. See you soon. Noah's Ark is an AI avatar generation platform that this creator uses and then creates a cross-platform experience by posting those avatars within the Over universe. I like that this center console creates a sense of command. Soon we'll have experiences like this that are interactive. Press a button at the helm and a different video will play. Waterfront by Hollywoodland. First impressions of this were that it was very loud and very massive. When the experience first loads, you find yourself inside of a security vehicle and I think that's really great. It's a really fun and unique starting spot. It's got the standard flashing floor issue, which happens whenever two elements are trying to occupy the exact same space. The app will load it by flashing. I love the color scheme and all of the artwork here. And there's this ominous character that stands in the middle. Police Station by Hollywoodland. That last experience really comes into context once we view this one. This is the intro scene to a game that was created by my friends and colleagues, Mints in the Metaverse and Hollywoodland. They did a lot of things well here, so let's go over it. Huge instructions, easy to read, a little long for my taste, but if you're interested in playing the game, it's perfect to have all of this info right in one place. We also get visual examples of all of the elements. The game is like Clue, so we get a location, a weapon, a suspect, and the goal is to narrow down the who, what, and where. The last experience was one of the locations, presumably providing a clue or two. The styling is really well done. I say that because of how consistent the tone is across the board. Color matches music, matches font, etc. Everything is well spaced out and easy to navigate. If you tap on a location, it will pop you over to that place. So you don't have to type in a land name or scan a QR code, you can just jump to that new location. By what I these are the same guys who brought us Santa is missing. That was a fun one too. Underwater version 11 by Hot Tab. The details of the outfits are really cool here. Artistically, we get one single point of view. Always a good thing. It does a great job of transforming my space. The aha, I'm underwater now really does translate and in an unexpected way. The choice of sound and animation is soothing enough. To lure the viewer into staying a while. 
the shadow of text on the floor is an Easter egg to let us know there's something above. I checked for occlusion. If there was occlusion, my hand would pass in front of the object. But I think that works really well for this content. You don't always need to turn occlusion on. 3PG by Demamar. Pick your opponent. That's new. After you tap the ball to shoot, the opponent throws a ball. So you get an actual game experience. Don't know if the choice did anything, but it was a nice feature. I like how intuitive it was to play. You didn't need any instructions. And it was motivating, you know, we found ourselves wanting to do well. What I like about the design is that the court itself gives you this sense of grandeur and transformation. But then after that, they kept it very minimal so that the publication doesn't become cluttered. Museum by Demamar. Love the placement here. It loads with the viewer standing right outside the front door. We've got complex displays that are still fully readable. I love what they did with the timeline on the floor. And it's a cool use case as the actual museum or to display the concept for an in-person exhibit. Even the typography of this one is very exciting. I can see that they are building a little universe inside of this metaverse, and I think that's really smart. ANG0407 by TIH Art NFT Gallery. So good, it actually looks like it's really inside this living room. If it was outside, I wouldn't have the issue of things disappearing behind walls, but we'd also lose out on some of the special effects. I was able to use walk mode, which is done by tapping the floor of the screen. It will virtually advance your avatar, which is just a camera view for you, the viewer, so that you don't have to physically walk the actual length of an experience to see all sides. Walk mode allowed us to follow the shadows and find the models that otherwise wouldn't have been visible. Shadows remaining visible while the model is occluded is standard practice for AR at this moment in time, as we saw in the Peridot video. All in all, we found three blue bear creatures, a silver levitating bear thing, and a planet. It was kind of nice that there was no sound because noise is usually the reason why we become compelled to jump out of an experience. It can be grating to hear the same loop over and over. Entitled Unity for Street Art for Mankind. Painted and augmented by Alex Arzu. By Zhu. This is one singular art piece. The artist has used the medium in a way that can only be done in AR. It definitely gives an air of fine art rather than digital art, even though it's definitely digital art. I'd love to read an artist's statement on this piece, although they did give us a lot of information utilizing the title space for the publication itself. I'd love to see more creators utilize this space because there's only so many ways we can communicate at this stage of the social media. I also wanted to note that the occlusion worked really well in this. Picksmith by Lux VR. Sometimes a great AR piece is just one you can use as special effects. My friends and I were out a little too late for golden hour, but we had a lot of fun filming this and playing around with what we can make it look like. I always find pieces by Lux VR to be simple and understated, yet really special. They're definitely a creator to keep your eye on. Green Sincere Level 4 by Discovery. What we know about Discovery is that they are a team that is or is associated with Metagate. They've put out several games that involve and are required to involve the physical world so like an overlay for an escape room 
or an overlay for a, a museum exhibit. I think that's some of the coolest use cases for augmented reality itself. For this platform, some of their pieces stand alone and some of them are incomplete when using it just with over. Whether or not we're getting the full picture here, what I wanna talk about is the floor treatment. After seeing hundreds of floors in Over the Reality, I'm surprised when I can see something I hadn't before. They created this tiling by drawing the outlines of the tiles themselves. And the way they do the outlines almost makes them look 3D. And I love that for AR. Walking around a backyard, it makes a floor for me to walk on but I can also see the floor so I don't trip on anything. It might be more effective with human occlusion turned on because once a person walks into frame, they go behind it. And I think that clicking the box that allows for human occlusion would fix that issue. My hope is that you, the viewer, will get some cool ideas on floor treatments after seeing this as an inspiration piece. Melee 2023 by J. Frank Cusp. Even though I viewed this on my phone screen, the fact that this is AR really does make it look bigger. It feels as though I'm viewing a huge screen. Terminamos con la inflación para siempre. Una Argentina distinta, donde podamos caminar por la calle sin miedo, porque el que las hace, las paga. Una Argentina distinta. My critique is regarding the loading location. The viewer is first placed behind the screen and I had to play around with it a little bit in order to get it in a good position. If I was new to the app, I'm not sure I would have figured it out. Seeing a political video reminded me of how important the social media aspect of this is. This is a place where the content is primarily user generated. So we're gonna see a lot of different opinions and a lot of voices, and eventually we will start seeing all of the same controversies that happen in Web 2 social media occurring in Web 3. And in some circles, that's already happening. It also means that eventually there'll be forms of censorship, and it'll be very interesting to see how that all plays out. I like augmented reality as yet another way of providing guerrilla information and guerrilla history. I don't know anything about these candidates, but AR is political. Zombie Rampage by Daniel81. This is so fun! It's easy to do and it really takes advantage of AR itself. Because I can still see the world around me, it's safe for me to be running through my apartment and I actually was running. <laughs> I needed to run fast so that I could stay alive long enough to catch the footage. This same experience, but in VR, would not have been safe because I would have tripped on something or I'd have to use my joystick instead of actually physically running. Also for me, it would have been too scary in VR. I would not have liked this in VR. This creator is very celebrated. They don't produce a ton of content, but when they do, it is high quality gaming like this one. TLW11 by T. Who is this artist? They are brilliant. I found this art piece arrestingly peaceful and beautiful. I love the crumpled walls, the little notes they left for us, and the way that the art pops off of the monochrome background. The Lost Wallet is the name of a game that Over themselves produced. So I'm not 100% sure what the connection is between this experience and that game. But the note saying you're early tells me that we don't have the full story yet. I'll keep you posted. When it comes to designing an app, what it does isn't any more important than how it does it. Whether it's a website or a mobile app, what you're really creating is an experience a piece of your world that you're publishing to benefit others. 
Our tiny boutique team of engineers will make sure that your users will get the experience they deserve. Reach out to us any way you like. I will personally walk you through our offerings and pricing. Just tell me what you want to build. I'm still wondering when we're going to get some basic UX upgrades for the mobile app. We're still missing the back buttons from the experiences themselves and in different catalogs of experiences. I first complained about these a year ago and I'd love to see it get built. Over if you're listening, our team would gladly be the engineers to fix that for you. Let me know if you want some help. I'll see you some other Tuesday for more content on the intersection of Web3 and XR. Goodbye.